We continue now at the top of Daf Vavam and Beis in Maseches Megillah. This is Megillah Daf Six B. And the previous summer, the, the Gemara was darshaning the pasuk in Tehillim Zemamo Al Tafik. Now Rashi over there notes that we're going to darshan it as Zemamo, meaning like the ring that you put in an animal in the animal's nose in order to hold on to the animal. And so now the Gemara darshans that refers to Germam Shel Edom. It's the name of a kingdom of Edom. Rashi over here says Germam Yoshe Malchus, the name of a kingdom. Vehime Edom, it's part of Edom. Because if they're allowed to go out, they're going to destroy the entire world. So the idea is you have to keep a hold on this Germam Yashel Edom. That's what the Pasuk in Tehillim means. And the Gemara continues, There are 300 princes in Germam of Edom. Ketire Tago literally means tied with crowns, referring to princes. With Tlosmei of Vishisin Vechamisha, and there are 365 Merzavni. Merzavni are chieftains, Ika Baromi, that are in Rome. Over Chol Yom, and every single day, Nafki, Hani, Laapi, Hani, these ones come and they fight against these. Umiktal Chad Minayu, and one of them dies. Umitridi Luukme Malka, and then they're busy trying to appoint a new king. The idea over here is that the fact that Germamia and Rome, the fact that they're not united, that's what prevents them from being able to destroy the world. Because as they're not united, so they're not as strong. The Gemara continues, V'yomar Rabbi Yitzchak, and Rabbi Yitzchak says, Yomar if someone tells you, Yagati v'lo matzasi, I worked hard, but I was not successful, al tamen, don't believe it. Lo yagati matzasi, a person says, I didn't work hard, but I found, but I was successful, al tamen, don't believe it. Yagati matzasi, but if the person says that I worked hard and I was successful, tamen, then you should believe it. But the Gemara says, Hani mili bidivre Torah. These rules apply by divrei Torah when it comes to the learning of Torah. So only somebody who toils is going to be successful. Avol b'masu matam. But when it comes to business, sayatu whom in Shemai, it's possible that person has a help from heaven. Even if the person didn't work hard, it's possible to be successful. The Gemara continues, Ula divrei Torah. And even with regards to divrei Torah, lo amarnelo lechidude. We're only talking about in terms of sharpening one's mind in words of Torah. But in order to prevent someone from forgetting Divrei Torah, Siyatam in Shemayi, that requires Siyata Dishmaya. The Gemara continues, V'yomar Rabbi Yitzchuk, and Rabbi Yitzchuk says, Imra Iso Rosho She'ashom in Sachek If you see a wicked person, that the hour is smiling upon him, meaning he's having good fortune, Al Tizkarabo, you shouldn't contend with him, you shouldn't fight with him. Shanema, like the Pasuk says, Al Tizkar B'mreim, against the evil people, you shouldn't contend. Velo, not only that, this person will be successful, this Russia. Shanema, like it says, at all times, his ways will be successful. He's going to prosper. Velo, not only that, he's going to win in judgment. Let's say you take him to court. Shanema, like it says, your judgments are far above him. They're removed from him. It's not going to affect him. Velo, not only that, he's going to see that he's going to be able to defeat his enemies. Shanema, like it says, Called Sorov Yafiach Bohem. Against all of his enemies, he hisses at them. And so the Gemara says, Ini, is this really true? Is it really true that if you see a Russia who is Shah Mesachek Eslo, you shouldn't contend? But Rabbi Yochanan said in the name of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, It's actually mutter to contend with the wicked in this world. Shanema, like the Pasuk says, Ozve Torah Yehalu Russia. Those who leave the Torah, they praise the, the wicked. But those who keep the Torah, they contend, they fight against the wicked. So on the contrary, we should fight against the wicked. But Tanya, we learned in a bride, so Rabbi Dustoi Bar Mason Omer, Rabbi Dustoi Bar Mason says, It's mutter to contend, to fight against Rishoyim in this world. Now maybe a person will whisper to you and he'll say, No, the Pasuk says you shouldn't contend with the wicked. You shouldn't be envious of those who do bad. So me shalibo nok for Omer Kane. That's only somebody who's afraid that resorts to that pasuk that says you shouldn't contend with them. Elo al tischar b'mereim lios k'mereim. That pasuk simply means al tischar b'mereim means don't be like the evil by the like the wicked ones. The al tekane beose avla lios kose avla. When it says al tekane beose avla, means don't be like those who do who do corruption. The Omer and the pasuk says al yikani libcha bechatoyim v'gomer. It says a person should not be envious by the sinners. And there also, the Pasuk is not referring to the fact that you shouldn't fight against them. It's referring to the fact that you shouldn't be like them. Don't be envious and try to copy them. But in any case here, we have a contradiction. In one place, it seems that you should contend. In the other place, it seems it seems that you should not contend against the Rishoyim. And so the Gemara says, Lokash, it's not difficult. Habemili di day, habemili de It depends what you're fighting. If you're fighting about things that have to do with you that are personal, that you shouldn't do against the Rishoyim. But if it's something that has to do with the service of heaven, Mili the Shvaya, then you should certainly fight against the Rishoyim. Vibai Sam, if you want, I could say another answer. Hava Hava Mili Diday. It's always talking about things that are personal. 
Velo kasha is not difficult. Habit tzadik gomer, habit tzadik sheino gomer. If a person's a total tzadik, they can fight against the rishonim with confidence. But if the person is not a total tzadik, they cannot do so. The Yomer of Huna, as Rav Huna says, my dechsev. What does the pasuk mean when it says this is a pasuk in Chabakok lama sabit bogdim tachrash bevela rosh tzadik mimenu? It says, why do you look at those who are evil and you're quiet when the rosh swallows up somebody that's a, a tzadik more of a tzadik than him? And so he darshans as follows: tzadik mimenu boleya. If the person is just more of a tzaddik, he could be swallowed up. But tzaddik gomor ain't no bolea. But if the person's a tzaddik gomor, he's not going to be swallowed up by the Russia. So the idea is again that a tzaddik gomor is able to contend with the Russia. And finally, the Gemara gives another answer. Vibai Sam, if you want, I could say another answer. Shaw misachekes loshani. It's different when you're talking about a Russia where the hour is smiling upon him. Normally, you can contend against the Rishoim. But in a situation of Shah Mesachekes lo, then you should refrain. The Gemara continues at the two dots. Amar Ula Ula says, Italia shall Yavan, that means Greek Italy, it's referring to the southern part of Italy. Zekrach Godol shall Romi, this refers to the great city of Rome. We have Itlos Mea Parsa, Itlos Mea Parsa, it's 300 Parsa by 300 Parsa. V'yesh Ba Shin Samechei it has 365 marketplaces. Kiminyan Yimos according to the days of the solar calendar, which is 365 days. The Kadan Shabakulam, the smallest of the markets, Shalmochre Ophos, it's sellers of poultry. Vahavishisha Asar Mil, Al Shisha Asar Mil, even the smallest one is 16 mil by 16 mil. Umelech Soid Bechol Yom Be'echad Mehen. And the king, means to say the emperor of Rome, he dines there in one of them every single day. Vahadar Bafapishaino Nolibba, somebody who lives there, even if he wasn't born there, Notel Prasmi Beis Hamelech, he gets to collect an allowance from the palace of the king. Let's say somebody's born there, but he doesn't live there. Still, no tal pras, mi beis hamelech, he gets an allowance from the palace of the king. There are 3,000 bathhouses there. They also constructed 500 windows that allow the smoke of the bathhouses to go outside of the walls. So the smoke doesn't ruin anything in the city, doesn't ruin any of the walls of the city. On one side of this city is the sea. But Tzido Echad Haram Ugvos, on another side of the city, is mountains and hills. Tzido Echad Mechitza Shal Barzal, on another side of the city, is a wall of iron. The Tzido Echad Chulsus Umetzula, and finally on the last side of the city is gravel and swamp. And the idea is that the city is heavily fortified and extremely difficult to conquer. And the Gemara continues at the Mishnah, Karu Esa Megillah Ba'adur HaRishon. Let's say they read the Megillah on the first Adar. Vinis Abra HaShon, and then it becomes a leap year, so they added a second Adar. So Koru No Sa Ba'adur Sheni. So you read it again. In Adar Sheni. Ein bein Adar Harishon la Adar Hasheni, ala Kriyas ha Megillah um Atanas Lavionim. There's no difference between the first Adar and the second Adar, except for the reading of the Megillah and the mitzvah of giving Matanos Lavionim, giving tzedakah to the poor. Rashi over here explains that Lamikra Megillah Kalomra means to say, Shema so Barishon lo Yatsa, meaning if you do these things in Adar Rishon, you're not going to be Yotze again, specifically referring to Kriyas and Megillah and Matanos Levyonim. And the Gemara says, Hala'inyan Seder Parashios, but in terms of the reading of the Parashios from the Torah, Zeva Zeshav, and the implication of the Mishnah is that Adar Rishon and Adar Sheni are equal, they're the same thing. So the Gemara says, Mani Masnison, who's the author of our Mishnah? Lo Tanakama, Velo Rebbe Leezer Brev Yossi, Velo Rebbe Shem Gamliel, doesn't seem to follow Tanakama, doesn't follow Rebbe Leezer Brev Yossi, and doesn't follow Rebbe Shem Gamliel. And Rashi over here says, Seder Parashios, Parsha Shkolim, Vizachor, Upara, Vachodesh, Parsha Shkolim, Parsha Zachor, Parsha Spara, Parsha Zachodesh, the Tanan Bemasnisen, the Vnei Ho'ir, No Hagen Badr. It says in the Mishnah that the people, they had the custom to read it in Adar. So Zev Zeshav, and it sounds like they're both the same. Shem Karam Barishon, Ain Sarach Lachzor, Velikros Besheni. If you read these Parshios in Adar Rishon, you don't need to read them again in Adar Sheni. And the Gemara says, the Tanya, as we learned in Abraisa, Karu Es HaMegillah Ba'adar HaRishon. Let's say they read the Megillah in Adar Rishon. Benesabra Hashana, then it became a leap year, so Korno Sab Adar Hasheni. You read it again in Adar Sheni. Shakal Mitzvah Shinohagos Besheni no Hagos Barishon, because all the mitzvahs that are in the second month can also be done in the first. All the mitzvahs in the second Adar can be done in the first Adar. Chutzmi Mikra Megillah, except for Mikra Megillah, that's the Tanakama. Rabbi Leezer Brev Yosi, Yom Rabbi Leezer Brev Yosi says, In Korno Sab Adar Hasheni, you don't have to read it in Adar Sheni. Shakal Mitzvah Shinohagos Besheni no Hagos Barishon, everything that you can do in Adar Sheni, you can do in Adar Rishon. Rav Shem Ben Gamliel, Omer Mishum Rav Yossi, Rav Shem Ben Gamliel says in the name of Rav Yossi, Af Korono Sab Adar Sheni, you could even read it in Adar Hasheni, Shekal Mitzvah Sheno Hagos Besheni, because everything that is Noeg in the second month, ain't no Hagos Berishon, you cannot do it in the first month. Veshavin Behesped Uvetainis, Shasurin Bazeo Vazeh, but everybody agrees when it comes to eulogies, when it comes to fasting, it's Asur in both Adars, both in Adar Rishon, and in Adar Sheni, when it comes to the days of Purim, there's going to be an Isser to have eulogies, there's going to be an Isser to fast. 
So the Gemara first asks, Rav Shimon ben Gamliel, Hainu Tanakama. Sounds like Rav Shimon ben Gamliel is saying the same thing as the Tanakama. The Tanakama said when it comes to Kriyas Megillah, it's no good in the first Adar, you have to do it in the second Adar. Rav Shimon ben Gamliel said the same thing. You read it in Adar Shani because you're not supposed to do it in Adar Rishon. And so the Gemara says, Amar Papa, Rav Papa says, Seder Parshios Ika Benayu. Exactly this is the issue between them. In terms of the reading of these other Parshios, what we just mentioned, Parsha Zohar, etc., that's the difference between the Tanakama and Rav Shimon ben Gamliel. The Tanakama Sova, the Tanakama holds Lechatchila Besheni. Lechatchila, you should do the Parshios in the second Adar. The Ovid Barishon Ovid, but if you do it in the first one, it's okay. Barmi Mikra Megillah, except for when it comes to reading the Megillah. The Afagav, the Karu Barishon, Karu Besheni. Even though he did it in the first Adar, you need to do it in the second. Rev. Eliezer, Rev. Yossi Sov, Rev. Eliezer, Rev. Yossi holds Afilu Mikra Megillah. Even when it comes to Mikra Megillah, Lechatchila Barishon, it's fine, Lechatchila, to do it in Adar Rishon. Rav Shem Ben Gamliel saw, and Rav Shem Ben Gamliel holds Afilu Seder Parshios, even these other Parshios, Ikaru Barishon, Karu Besheni. If you read it in the first Adar, you have to read it again in the second Adar, you're not Yotze in the first Adar. And so the Gemara now says, money, so who's the author of our Mishnah? E if you're going, the, if you're going to say that it's a Tanakama, Kasha Matonos, so then we have a Kasha when it comes to Matonos Levyonim, because the Tanakama over here doesn't mention Matonos Levyonim, just says Mikra Megillah. Mikra Megillah is the only thing that needs to be done in Adar Sheni. And our Mishnah t- talked about Mikra Megillah and Matanus Levyonim. And the Gemara says further, E Rabbi Eliezer Rabbi Yossi, if you're going to suggest that our Mishnah is Rabbi Eliezer Rabbi Yossi, Kashanami Mikra Megillah, you have a difficulty also for Mikra Megillah, because Rabbi Eliezer Rabbi Yossi said you could do Mikra Megillah in the first Adar. Again, our Mishnah said you have to do it in the second. And E Rav Shem Mengam Liel, and if you're going to say our Mishnah is Rav Shem Mengam Liel, Kasha Seder Parshios, then this issue of Seder Parshios is going to be difficult, because again, according to our Mishnah, when it comes to Seder Parshios, you can do it in the first Adar. According to Rav Shem Mengam Liel, that's not allowed. And so the Gemara answers Liolam Tanakama, really our Mishnah is the Tanakama. Betona Mikra Megillah, Vuha Din Matanos Levyonim. And the truth is, even though it said only Mikra Megillah is something that has to be done in the second Adar, the same would be true with Matanos Levyonim, just like our Mishnah said, that also must be done in the second Adar, to Hobah Talia, because as we've said earlier, Matanos Levyonim is really dependent on Mikra Megillah. The halach is that whenever Mikra Megillah is, that's what the Aniyim would look to to get their tzedakah, so the Matanos Levyonim has to be the same time. Vibay Sam, if you want, I could say another answer, Liolam Rav Shem Lilhi. Really, our mission is Rav Shem Gamliel. Question is, if our mission is Rav Shem Gamliel, Rav Shem Gamliel was strict by Seder Parashio, said it had to be in the second Adar. Umas nizin chisurei mechser v'hachi katani. But our mission is missing some words, and it should read as follows. Ein bein ar bo'asr sheba adar rishon, liyodalet sheba adar hasheni. There's no difference between the 14th of the first Adar and the 14th of the second Adar. Elo mikra megillo umatonos. The only difference is, by mikra megillo matonos lavyonim, that has to be in the second Adar. The only thing you should be, be medayik from our Mishnah, you should infer, is that when it comes to eulogies, when it comes to fast, they're equal. You're not allowed to have eulogies or fast on your dalit, whether it's the first or the second. Ve'ilu, Seder Parshios Lomairi, but whereas when it comes to the Seder Parshios, those other Parshios, the Mishnah's not dealing with those other Parshios, and it is very possible that the Seder Parshios as well has to be an Adar Sheni. The Gemara continues, Amar Rebichia Baravin, Amar Rebichia Baravin, Amar Rebichia Baravin says in the name of Rebichia Baravin, on Hilchisok Reb Shem Ben Gamliel, Sha'omar Mishum Reb Yossi. The Halacha is like Reb Shem Ben Gamliel, who says in the name of Reb Yossi, meaning again, the Halacha is like Reb Shem Ben Gamliel, that even when it comes to Seder Parshios, that should be an Adar Sheni. And the Gemara continues, Amar Rebichia Baravin, Amar Rebichia Baravin says, Ushnei Mikra Echad Darshu. They're both darshning one Pasuk. The Pasuk says, Bechol Shona Vishana every single year. Rabbi Eliezer, Rabbi Yossi, Savar, Bechol Shona Vishana. What does it mean every year should be the same? Ma Kol Shona Vishana, Adar HaSamach L'Shvat. Just like every other year, it's always the Adar that's closest to Shvat. Avkan Adar HaSamach L'Shvat. So to over here, it should be the Adar that's closest to Shvat, meaning it should be Adar Rishon. Rav Shem Ben Gamliel, Savar, Rav Shem Ben Gamliel holds no, Bechol Shona Vishana every single year. Ma Kol Shona Vishana, Adar HaSamach L'Nisan. Just like every year, it's the Adar that's close to Nisan. Afkan Adar Hasamach Lenisan. So to over here, it should be the Adar that's closest to Nisan, meaning it should be Adar Sheni. And so the idea is that's why Rabbi Yezer Rabbi Yossi says again, Mikra Megillah can be an Adar Rishon. Again, Bechol Shana Vishana means it's the Adar Hasamach Lishvat, it's in the first Adar. Rabbi Shem Ben Gamliel says, no, again, it's the Adar Hasamach Lenisan. The Mikra Megillah specifically has to be an Adar Sheni. So the Gemara says, Bishlomer Rabbi Yezer Rabbi Yossi. I understand Rabbi Yezer Rabbi Yossi, who says you read the Megillah in Adar Rishon. Mistaber time, it's logical. Why should we pass up on the mitzvahs? You have the opportunity to do the mitzvah in the first Adar. You should do it in the first Adar. But according to Rabbi Shem Ben Gamliel, what's his reason that it should specifically be in the second Adar? Amar Rabbi Tavi, so Rabbi Tavi says, Time with Rabbi Shem Ben Gamliel, Mismach Geula Adif. 
If Shem Gamliel holds, it's better to put the Geula next to the other Geula. In other words, in the month of Nisan, that's when we remember the Geula from Mitzrayim. And so therefore we should read the Megillah that's talking about the Geula, the redemption from Achashverosh. That should be an Adar Sheni. And the Gemara continues, Rebbe Lazar, Rebbe, Rebbe Lazar says, Time with Rebbe Shem Ben Gamliel Mehacha. The reason of Rebbe Shem Ben Gamliel, it comes from here from the following Pasuk, because the Pasuk says, L'kayim esigeres ha-purim hazos ha-shenis. Talks about the letter of this Purim a second time. Sounds like there are some situations where you have to read it a second time. Specifically, if you read it in Adar Rishon and then it became a leap year and they made an Adar Sheni, so you have to read the Megillah in Adar Sheni. And the Gemara says, V'itzrech lemichtav, and it's necessary to write, and we'll continue with this discussion in the next video, and Avzayin Amit Aleph.